This week on Awesome Chat, we're talking with Aaron Parkas here in the studio about making haunted houses, set designs, going to Dubai to do such things, and putting dimples in the butts. Find out what that means this episode on Awesome Chat. Awesome Chat is brought to you by Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Chat. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studio in Pittsburgh, PA. This is the show where we talk to awesome people in and out inside of Pittsburgh doing awesome things around technology, geekery, or just makers sometimes, as is the case today. Of course, please check out everything Awesome Chat on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and of course, video versions on the Awesome Cast Facebook page and the YouTube, including live streams just like this one happens on the Facebook live page. Uh, if you subscribe there, you'll get notifications for whenever those happen and events on uh, some of those that are coming up as we schedule them or last minute schedule them as some cases may be. Uh, you can also please support the show, patreon.com slash awesome cast if you're liking what we're doing there. And hit us up if you have somebody awesome you think we should be chatting with uh, at awesome cast on the Twitter through our Facebook page or awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. And please check out everything at awesomecast.com, including this and the main show and whatever other properties might be coming up. Awesome tips have been hopping up there a little bit. With us today is a good buddy. Been doing some of the podcasts with us, especially on Wrestling Mayhem Show. Aaron Parkas is joining us here in the studio. How you doing, man? Good. Thanks for having uh, me. Aaron, you, you, you make stuff I is the, the broad stuff. thing that I can describe you as because <laughs> I don't even know. Like we were just talking about trying to figure out, like, I, I don't know what the umbrella term is it, for what you do. It, I don't, I don't know if there is one. It's, it's <laughs> wide. I, I have a lot of different business cards. So well, one, well, we should, we should point out, he's the one that put up this wall for us back here. Uh, yep. build, build a wall. I know that sounds like brick, doesn't it? Uh, and then now the dog thinks somebody's knocking at the door. Um, but, 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 you know, for instance, like, you know, you do set design, you do special effects makeup or had in the past doing makeup yeah. and everything like that. Um, you know, what's the general stuff that you're into? So, uh, my main background is set design and props, um, and a little bit of prosthetic sculpting for special effects makeup. Um, I've done a little bit of that. Um, Mostly, I I do haunted houses and escape rooms. I design haunted houses and escape rooms in and around the Pittsburgh area. Um, And also a little bit of movie work, like doing props and stuff for movies for various effects, local effects companies. Awesome. So how did you you find yourself in this line of work? Uh, It was weird. Um, I I remember when I was in high school, I uh, saw Lord of the Rings. And it uh, hit hard, you know, and I, I ended up watching the behind the scenes for those movies more than uh, the actual movies themselves. Did, were you one that had the two disc collector set that had like yeah, the, an extra two DVDs? Yeah, or... it was like three hour long movie. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and I ended up burning through the actual the special features and just putting the movie on the shelf. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, but uh it, so I was in high school and somebody from the art Institute came like a recruiter came and I was just looking into making like cool sets and like miniature models. That was my thing like in high school, like mm-hmm. that I wanted to do. Um, and they didn't have anything for that, but they did have, what they did have was a program at the art Institute of Pittsburgh for special effects and makeup effects. So I'm like, you know what? That's if I, if I can't do, like the sets and miniatures and stuff, that's the next best thing, you know, making mm-hmm. props, like uh, weapons, soft weapons, um, masks, like Halloween masks, prosthetics. Um, so that that stuff was cool. I figured I'd give that a shot. Um, so I uh, went to the Art Institute, and while I was there, I got a job at Scarehouse um, and ended up, like, loving to do loving haunted houses i didn't even realize that you could do that as a job Mm -hmm. you know i'd never been through a haunted house or anything like that Mm -hmm. um and yeah it just kind of like trickled upward i guess from there so it was it was just kind of the state where you you found yourself in that ecosystem and just these other opportunities around that kind of yeah yeah it's just it's it's just i i got lucky Mm -hmm. um 
because there there's it's Pittsburgh. I did figured there weren't going to be a lot of movie opportunities at mm-hmm. the time. There weren't. Um, so you know what? I could build my. I figured I'd build my portfolio doing haunted house stuff like makeup and stuff like that. And eventually, I got brought on to do set work, which was just a coincidence because I didn't do any of that stuff at school. Mm-hmm. So uh, I learned uh, set work and stuff uh, like that. And I ended up doing like CAD and floor plans and um, just like the decorating and distressing um, mm-hmm. stuff like foam carving. Um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was weird. It was kind of an on the job training, really. Um, and from there, I just went to various places and started building up a portfolio and a reputation that I said, okay, here's my work. Here's what I can do. Mm-hmm. And I just started shopping it out to a bunch of places to see if they needed help and i'd get calls so yeah it, well of course there's 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 a probably a pretty vibrant community for special effects people i know there's, there's savini school and things like that yeah there, you know there there's a lot it, it's it, i got really lucky because there are a lot of great schools in pittsburgh mm-hmm. that teach special effects but there's not a lot of opportunities in pittsburgh for special effects right so most of the people here end up going out to like la or to new york or wherever um to find work um outside of the pittsburgh area so i've been really lucky that i've been able to actually stay in pittsburgh the whole time so so is it get work is it is it so like because you know kind of shaping that like is it is it a certain certain kind of work that's here that's like like lower end or is is would you Um, say or is it or is it just like some niche stuff i think i think i think i just found a niche like Mm -hmm. there's not a lot of people that design sets right uh, and as far as special effects go, I mean, they do they do like the mostly character work or prop work. Um, and I, I, f- I kind of found a niche like here in Pittsburgh where there's two great haunted houses in the city that um, we're looking for work. Mm-hmm. And, and the other one, um... the other one's Hundred Acres Manor. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, they they were just looking for work at, uh, people at the time and. I, I just got lucky and uh, ended up like just building up a skill set that um, I ran with. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about uh, like we'll stay on the haunted house line for a bit because the haunted houses got you to well Dubai. Yeah, early earlier, but this La- time last year, right? Uh, yeah. About May last last year. Yeah. Yeah. So so tell us, tell us a little bit of how that came about and a little bit about that experience. I know we've had was, conversations uh, about that here and there. I was working at hundred acres at the time, um, doing haunted houses and an escape room there. They opened up an escape room over there. And, um, that's something that they'd been working on for a while. They, there was this guy, uh, from Dubai who ended up coming to the U S and he traveled all around the country going to various haunted houses cause he loved them. And he went to hundred acres and it was his favorite haunted house. So he basically commissioned them to build a haunted house in dubai he wanted to open a haunted house in dubai it was the first haunted house uh over there it's in the dubai mall still to this day um thankfully they're still open and they're doing great Mm -hmm. um and yeah it it was he just i just got a call uh it was like january i wasn't even working with the at the haunt at that time that's like the off season so i was doing some other work and uh i got a call from them and they said uh do you have a passport? I'm like, oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> They're like, like, we might be building a haunted house in Dubai. I'm like, oh, okay. When? When uh, they want to open it in six months? <laughs> and that's that's a short turnaround. That is a really short turnaround to open mm-hmm. up a haunted house, um, from ground up. Like it it was an empty uh, storefront inside the mall when we got there. Like there wasn't any, they they were pouring the concrete as we got there. That's how empty it was. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> wait, so, so you're you're now you're now building a haunted house on a on fresh concrete. No, we had point. to wait. We you had to wait. wait. Yeah. We were sit. We were yeah. We had to wait two weeks for before we could even start building. Mm-hmm. So and they had a de- they had a hard deadline. Mm-hmm. Um, they had to be open. Um, thankfully, we did a lot of prep work. Uh, in the months beforehand mm-hmm. so that 
a lot of the um props and everything were built in here in pittsburgh and then we shipped we ended up shipping them over to dubai and so they they met us there when uh we got there mm -hmm. um so we just had to basically do the walls and like all the wall decorations so other than that i mean obviously you know you got to you know, experience a different culture and everything like that what are what are some interesting challenges going from you know building a house here versus building something i guess for a dubai uh, foreign um, audience like that as far as theming it, it it was it really wasn't that much different like they wanted mm -hmm. a very uh traditional haunted house like uh mm -hmm. a haunted mansion type uh theme and they, they wanted it really traditional there were some things that we weren't allowed to use uh just based on because of the culture uh other things just because it wouldn't resonate like we were talking about i remember we were shopping around for props and stuff for the actors to use and we're like oh let's get a chainsaw um they, they'll scare the crap out of people here mm -hmm. but they don't use chainsaws over in dubai there's no trees. I mean, you know, it's in the middle of the desert. So it's like, he's like, I don't think people will be scared by that. They don't really even know what they are. You know what I mean? So, so he's like, okay, I guess we won't use that. There are no lumberjacks <laughs> no, in the there, desert. There, there's, there's, there's no <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm -hmm. over there. Um, but, um, yeah, so, I mean, other than that, it was, it was very, it was very uh, much the same. We did it the same way that we would do it here as far as theming and planning everything out. Uh, some of the hurdles were like that we had were more with the lo the venue than mm -hmm. anything. What is it? What's what's the name of the the attraction? It's called Hysteria. Oh, good, I found it. <laughs> yeah, because I've never seen it. Oh yeah, I, and yeah, I'm just like, of course somebody's put it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a called Hysteria. Shortlistdubai.com has has some images of it, and there that's, is that the front door yep, I'm looking at that's there. The, yeah, that's the facade. Yeah, it's funny. The front door we actually bought from a at a liquidation sale here in Pittsburgh. Those are the front doors. From if you've seen the movie The Last Witch Hunter, it was being shot oh, here wow. in Pittsburgh. We ended up buying those doors for like three hundred dollars, <laughs> and they're huge. Those those doors are like six feet uh, by eight and a half feet tall. Mm -hmm. um, they weigh like three hundred pounds a piece. Um, we had wow. to build we had to build our own pallet to fit the things on there. And you had to ship them to Dubai. And we had to ship them to Dubai. Wow. Um, <laughs> and I've seen you know the way my work you've seen the the kids from like like India and Brazil having to bring their Baja cars here. Yeah, which they have to chop up because they can't import an entire car. Yeah, um, you know they, they, I can't imagine. Well, that that shipping things over there was a real trouble, like hassle, also because we'd never shipped anything international, so we didn't really know. Yeah, um, there's a lot of regulations. Like you can't ship wood over there that's not fire treated because they're worried about bugs and like termites that are inside the wood and if you ship it over there that's an invasive species mm -hmm. going over there so we had to have all the wood that we had over there uh that we we're taking over there had to be fire treated and had to have like a stamp so we ended up going to a lumber mill up in newcastle to that's that was the nearest place we could find fire treated lumber <laughs> so um, so lumber from newcastle pa yeah <laughs> has found itself in hysteria um and uh, we're looking at the website right now on video uh for this as well so it is great yeah, I mean the the guys over there uh, that are running it are they, they're doing a great job, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, it's been getting a lot of publicity over there. That's great. Yeah, yeah. You, you've seen a bunch of articles coming up. Oh, no video yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you can, if you guys want to check out um, uh, hysteria ae is the website, and there's a few images and and things going on. And you can buy tickets if you are about to make the trip out to Dubai. Uh, that's awesome. So so. What kind of you know obviously building this around it like what kind of shocked you about like you know that that culture over there like what well, sounds like it, was it sounds like for it sounds like you were in a very Americanized area it, to begin with I think that's what shocked me the most was that how how similar it was to over here it, it, I compared it a lot to going up to Canada mm -hmm. because if you go over to Canada like even like um like the highway signs or restaurant signs everything's in English. And in French up in Canada, because there's two primary languages. There's French and English Yeah, up there. In Dubai, everything was in English and in Arabic for everything. All the signs were in English and in Arabic. Um, <clears throat> and it, it was very, it, it, um, the cult, there wasn't much uh, um, culture shock from it, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was, it was a little different um, just because of. Um, 
Hmm. I'm trying to think how to say this. Um, the it it's a religious based country. Like all their laws and everything are religious based. Yeah, which isn't something that we deal with here. Like we were there during Ramadan, which uh, towards the end of it, and you're not during Ramadan. It's illegal to eat or drink in public from sunup to sunrise, and that's not something we're accustomed to in the U.S. You know, so there's like mm-hmm. things like that that were there you had to get used to. But other than that, it wasn't like. It wasn't that uh, much different than here. Um, we were we ended up having to rent a car and we were driving around Dubai, <laughs> <laughs> like the whole time we were there. Like mm-hmm. it's like we would drive we would drive from our hotel to the mall, and then we'd drive to Ace Hardware to, where we'd go get all our supplies. Um, they have like any major uh, franchise here in the U.S. Chances are they have it in Dubai. Mm-hmm. We they have an IHOP. They have the uh, Texas uh, Roadhouse, um, you know. What I mean, it like it's it it was very it was very similar to here. Um, yeah, I mean, awesome. About it. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about us about us, uh, escape rooms. Yeah, I uh, don't know what I was trying to call it there. Uh, so tell me a little bit about your work around there. Obviously, there's the set design and everything, but but that I have actually never been in an escape room. Uh, producer Missy has um, you with the uh, Imaginarium. I think you did right, uh, which I think obviously I think is a little different than what you work on. Uh, tell us about for those that haven't. Because they seem to be popping up everywhere. Yeah. I, every, every town, when I started traveling last year, it seemed like every town I ended up with, like I found a billboard or a sign or passed an escape room. There's one down in uh, uh, Charleroi we passed a few weeks ago. There's one in Dormont. There's one in Dormont Right now. above the bowling alley. Right above the bowling alley. Yeah, no, we were looking at the signs for yeah. that. We were at Tom's Diner the other day. Uh, so tell, tell us, what is, what's the concept behind, behind an escape um, room? Escape rooms are... Um... They're they're like live action video games almost, mm-hmm. where you're you're trapped in a room that's themed different. Like all of them are themed differently, uh, for usually a, uh, an hour, um, and you have to solve various puzzles and unlock various c- secret compartments in order to escape within that hour. Um, and it's something that happened. It picked up. It was picked up from. Uh, I want to say Turkey, I think it was, was where the first escape rooms were uh, invented. And it was it was huge over in uh, Europe and ended up just like coming over here into Pit, uh, well, into Pittsburgh, into the U.S. <laughs> um, recently that um, it just, it's 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 similar to haunted houses uh, in that like the, the theming with the, the theming and the immersion. But uh, it's more. uh um, hands on, I guess. And it's not always like that creepy. No, thing, no, right? no. Yeah, and that's that's one of the major misconceptions with escape rooms is that it's scary, like mm-hmm. haunted houses, mm-hmm. and like you're being chained into like a room. You know what I mean? And somebody's gonna pop out and scare you. Uh, a lot of them aren't uh, themed like that at all. Like uh, right now, I'm working over at Escape Room Pittsburgh. Uh, they have two locations over in one up in Greenfield and. One in Homestead, uh, over by Aldi's, uh, and they have various theme- themed rooms there. They have a jail cell where you're basically trying to break out of a, a jail. They have a, a mad scientist themed one, uh, a mummy's tomb where you're trying to break out of the mummy's tomb. Uh, we just recently did one that's called Carnegie's Millions uh, over in Homestead, where you're in Andrew Carnegie's study and you're breaking into his bank vault. Uh, and there's like a neat little Illuminati twist into it. Um, but they're not none of these none of these scenarios are horror themed. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all they're all themed, you know, so that it's very di- like intentionally very different from your everyday life because I think that's what people want to see. That's the whole point of going to those or to see a movie or for a video game uh is that it's it's a very big contrast from your daily life Mm -hmm. um and right now we're doing a subway themed escape room that's kind of it pays on it's kind of paying homage to uh the movie the warriors and escape from new york uh so we're that's the new one that we're doing right now yeah that's uh carnegie's millions it's awesome. So again, this is like you know you're building this up, you know, and it's uh, 
Uh, I think I saw that. Was there a Pharaoh's Tomb one? I saw that might be coming up. Tomb Explorer. Tomb Explorer. Like. Yeah, like that's a, that's in uh, that's in Homestead. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I mean, are you part of the like? Are you figuring out the puzzles? Or are you just kind of applying and building? Uh, right now, well, when I first started there, I started in the middle of the build for Carnegie's Millions. Like they'd already started construction when I joined up. Mm-hmm. Um, but they didn't have a lot of the puzzles locked down. So I I spent a good portion of my time with the one of the owners Corey, developing the puzzle, uh, flow and sequence basically, how like basically the blueprint of they're gonna do this and that's gonna unlock that and lead to this, and uh, basically uh, map out how the whole game's gonna play, um, and then from there I went into like the fabricating of some of the props and set stuff. Um, on this one that we're doing right now, I've been doing a lot more of the set design, mm-hmm. which is more of my spe- specialty. Um, they they have puzzles like down pat, like they they're really good at figuring out new and creative ways to <laughs> make puzzles to n- screw with your brain. And it sounds like it's kind of a more of a game game design concept that 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 applies to that. It is, right? it so, is, yeah, mm-hmm. it is, and uh, it's my the where. Where I was m- most uh, comfortable with the game design was like figuring out how we can implement that into the set so that it doesn't look cheesy, too cheap. Mm-hmm. Like you know, so like, what various props would you have in a study? You'd have a fireplace, you'd have bookshelves, you'd have um, like a desk, like all these various things. Mm-hmm. So it was like, what? Okay, how can we use those in a puzzle? Um, and it's really neat the way that they're doing their escape rooms because most escape rooms are, or traditional escape rooms are all lock and key where you're mm-hmm. solving a puzzle that gives you a key, a physical key, and then you unlock it or there's a combination lock. All the puzzles at esca- in uh, the Homestead location uh, at the escape room are all second generation uh, puzzles in that they're all electronic. So everything you do, there's no actual locks in that room. You, you're solving these puzzles, and there's various sensors that will react and open a compartment or do a different effect. So it's it's all computerized now. And there's a video of the KDK news team apparently playing the uh, yeah. They the just came the through site. the uh, a couple weeks ago. That's awesome. Yep, it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. So that's great. Uh, so, you know, for somebody trying to get into something like this, you know, obviously, you know, I get kind of a similar thing where, where you know, you know, video is like, eh, I'm not going to do video in Pittsburgh. And now there's so many opportunities yeah, here, as you're yeah. finding with your your field. Um, what what advice do you give people that are looking into this kind of work or this kind of building creative work like this? Um, call around, you know, I mean, th- that that's how I've mainly gotten most, most of my work is I just call various places and say, Hey, do you have anything that you need help with? Here's my portfolio. Yeah. Um, and more often than not, somebody they'll either call you back and say, yeah, we got something or they'll say that we don't have anything right now, but we'll keep you in mind. Um, I sent my portfolio and resume to this is through to escape room Pittsburgh a year before they called me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And they, and it, they they just called me out of the blue one day because they lost my email. Like they just saw my email, <laughs> <laughs> and so that so they're like they're like, uh, do you want to come down and we can talk about it? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. So I mean, and this is you know you're working for several different groups at this point too. Like this is more of a uh, gig kind of uh, yeah. uh, system for this kind of work. Yeah. Right? So yeah, I I'm an independent contractor. Um. I've worked for various haunted houses like uh, 100 Acres Manor. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done a number of projects for them and for Scarehouse um, and the escape room. All these pro- all these jobs, they're all temporary jobs. You know, I mean, once the project's done, you got to move on to the next thing. Um, right. In addition to that, I've also worked a lot at uh, Tolan Effects over in, uh, where's he at? Point Breeze, I think it is. I'm not sure. All the boroughs over there are very condensed. Um, doing uh, props. Um, he's the local effects guru here in Pittsburgh. If you've seen any 
movies or TV shows like Outsiders or Mindhunter where there's blood effects. Uh, he's he's the blood guy here in Pittsburgh. The, oh, so you work for the blood guy. He's the blood guy. Everybody's gonna have a blood guy, right? It, well, if you uh, they had um, what was the movie? Uh, Evil Dead the musical mm-hmm. here in Pittsburgh, and he was. If I don't know if anybody's gone to that, but uh, that movie was or that uh musical was a bloodbath like they tarped off the first however many rows <laughs> and gave people ponchos because they were that was it was basically the splash zone at sea world uh awesome. they had its own entrance and everything uh but he's yeah he, they they have a, a great uh shop over there um they do like all the bullet hits um soft weapons for outsiders uh, they've been doing a lot of stuff with Mine Hunter here in Pittsburgh. Man, everybody works for Outsiders. Everybody it seems. <laughs> yeah, everybody's cross paths with that, uh, uh, Outsiders at some point. And I, I know one project that we talked about. You worked on a butt some one time. I did. That was my very first job when I was working at uh, Tolan's. Uh, I wasn't even being paid at the time because they had already filled all their paid positions. So I was like, you know what, I'm bored. He's like, you want to come and you want to come and like sculpt? I'm like, sure. So I uh, went over there, and and that's important. You have to keep doing. I, yeah, I always say, you know, put you your know, put yeah. your work out there. Like if they see that you're a hard worker, uh, more often than not, you'll get a call to stay or mm-hmm. uh, come back, and some like jobs will open up. Um, yeah, so I didn't I didn't get paid for my first month there. I don't think, um, but I was just I was just going there and working because I mean it was that or just sit at home. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um, yeah, my first, my first job there, we were, just, uh, sculpting a fat suit for, um, oh, I can't remember the name the of full Monty. full Monty, full Monty. That's what it was. Uh, yeah, that was, that's it. That's the fat suit. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was at, uh, for, uh, CMU. Um, and from there it just led to, he's like, like once that was done, I figured uh, I'd be looking for more work. And he said, "Oh, cool! I just picked up another job. Oh, cool! I just picked up another gig. Like you wanted to do this, you want to do that." Um, and it just snowballed until I found more work. Hmm. Yeah, you're um, you're you, and of course you're at the point uh, where you're you're kind of kind of working on spinning up your own company at this point, right? Yeah, yeah. So I've I've gotten to the point where um. I'm starting, I'm in the process of starting up my own, uh, set design and prop fabrication shop, Mm -hmm. uh, here in Pittsburgh. Um, and it's not going to be just, it's, it's going to be catered to, it's going to be more themed entertainment. So if you're looking to do, uh, haunted houses, escape rooms, uh, theater, movie stuff, whatever. Um, even if it's like restaurant facades, you know? Um, anything that's a themed, uh, s- display that you're looking for, for like storefronts, whatever, um, that's, that's going to be my main focus. Um, but yeah, I'm looking to start that up within the next, uh, year and hopefully having a, a shop set up by then. That's awesome. Is that, is that something that's, that's kind of missing in the scene here in Pittsburgh? Um, I don't know if it's missing, but it, it, it seems to be that there's, becoming more of a demand for it mm. with the movies with the movies we're, we've been getting a lot of tv shows here in pittsburgh we have mm-hmm. mind hunter um outsiders we just picked up a new nbc uh crime drama um and then whatever various movies that they shoot here from mm-hmm. time to time you know and so i know it, a lot of those because there was I've, I've seen videos of the visit of sets like like law and order and yeah. seeing how many of those sets are just built for the week you yeah, know. yeah. Well, it, it's funny because I uh, I got a call to do electrical work out of all things for Mine Hunter. Um, I'm not an electrician. They just <laughs> they well, I was on, I was on the union's uh, permit list for scenic painting, and they were sh- short staffed, so they started pulling from all the various other uh, um, categories like painting for people to do electric rigging. So. Uh, I, I did electric rigging for mine hunter for uh, a bit and we were over at 31st street studios and they had every single interior set in that giant studio mm-hmm. and they were all hard built. 
like a lot of a lot of sets are either built so that you can take them apart so there you build it and then move you can move all the walls and everything or they're built permanently so they stay there for a while mine hunters i think has a five-year contract so those sets weren't planning on, they weren't planning on moving those sets they're just in storage in and, the and at that point you're you, i mean you're kind of building them to last too, yeah right yeah. so that's that's great um, well it, it is, but I, I, I heard that they ended up closing 31st street studios. Mm-hmm. So now they have all the sets for mine hunter that are permanent installations <laughs> oh, no. that they had to move to, uh, some studio over in Cranberry. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> but I mean, I, it, it, even that, that creates work for people, you know, cause oh, then, yeah. then they have to take down all those sets. That's and, part of this, and that's part of this. So, and this is stuff that happens. Yeah. Right? It, it happens. Yeah. And you just. Roll with it. There, this is this is like basically the entire ecosystem of Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> they were out oh there. my god. Because so, <laughs> I'm sure there's there's plenty of you know movements going on there. You know, there's so. there's so many more moving parts to TV shows and mm-hmm. films that I'd never like. You, you don't you don't really grasp it until you're in it. Yeah. You I, know what I mean. Well, think about then. I think uh, for one example, Supergirl. Like I think. Part of them moving the CW was they lowered the budget and moved the production up to Vancouver. Yeah. I don't know where. I think they might have been in L.A. Well, but those sets went and a lot of the same sets, right? Uh, I don't know how they build them, we, but they we had were, to reproduce them. We were supposed to get um, a TV show last year called Manifesto um, that I, th- I think it's for the History Channel or A&E, one of them. Um that we ended up not getting because the state ran out of tax money. So <laughs> it ended up, it ended up going down to, um, Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, like that's, that's where we're at right now with Pittsburgh is like, there's so many jobs that yeah. like, they just scoop it up. And once the money's gone, that if people, you, if you want to know <laughs> who's gaming and who has tax credits, when you're watching, we know this from wrestling. Because if you watch something that happened in Florida, there's a made in Florida. There's a made in Georgia yeah. with a peach at the end. It's yep. at the end of Walking Dead. Um, like you start seeing those, especially in the states. Obviously, I mean, there's so much in Vancouver. It's kind of a mini Hollywood yeah. up there at this point. So is Atlanta. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, they're shooting. They're shooting the new uh, Avengers: Infinity Wars. There, mm-hmm. Walking Dead, uh, uh, Avengers, Str- Stranger Things is oh, being shot. Ohio's there. starting to do post credits on on things. Uh, which of course the first Avengers was, and I think part of the second one at least was shot up there. Yeah, in Cleveland. In Cleveland. Yep. Uh, so Ohio in general, I think, it, it is bringing stuff into a lot of those cities. Uh, Columbus, I think, has had a little bit, if I if I recall, and and you know these smaller towns too. So you know it's it, this it is it's not just a Hollywood thing anymore or a New York City thing anymore. Well, people right? people are realizing that you can get a lot of these great sets and locations or um sets for shots uh without building them because they already exist in various parts of the country Mm -hmm. and it's cheaper there than trying to build in california um it's cheaper in labor it's cheaper in um just just because of the cost of being in california Mm -hmm. i we um um, are we i'm going to film next next week in california and i was surprised that we had to apply for a permit apparently or something oh really Uh, you know yeah just for filming an event you know, they're like the, 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 we have, we're such a low run setup because it's me with a camera and a tripod, right? Yeah. But they're like asking all the questions: Are you going to have? Uh, are you going to have a, a drone? Are you going to be doing this? How many people? Da, 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 da. You know, how, how many hours are people going to be a part of this? Are you going? On, don't go off trail. And, and we're also in the national park system too, so that that, that probably was a, <laughs> that probably was a part of it too. Yeah. We're, we're up in the mountains for it because it's a motocross track. That's that's but, interesting. Like doing because you're not allowed to destroy any. Like you have to leave oh, it the yeah. way you oh, shot yeah. it. Because when I was working on Mine Hunter, we were actually shooting on location in Moundsville Prison. Mm-hmm. which is a historical it's a museum yeah now so all the walls all the walls there uh um they couldn't be nailed in mm-hmm. um bas- they basically had to leave it the way they found it wow so like you, you're tiptoeing around and things. somebody's checking that <laughs> yeah oh yeah i love as i'm just talking about california somebody from california our friend veronica pops in the chat room <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, her ears were burning. Yeah, apparently, apparently, um, I'll be I'll be near her like next week as well. So, uh, but anyways, um, so so that's awesome. I mean, it's good to see there's a lot of opportunity around this, and and, and see that you're kind of building that up. Uh, so it, it, it's cool to like 
like get to that point where you're like, I, I think we can do this on this on our own, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So cool. Uh, so I don't have a lot to show. <laughs> you, no, you don't I, have a lot I, to I was show a little unprepared. Other than your projects, this well, you you still uh, you still I mean you're still in the process and you're, you're you're building that up online. All, yeah, all your stuff's so kind I'll, of internal. I'll, I'll have some websites for you soon. Right, right. But uh, but in the meantime, we've been showing here. What are what are some of the sub sites of places that you've worked for so you can um, see what kind of projects you've been a part of uh let's see escape room pittsburgh uh i think it's escape room pgh um, is the website mm -hmm. and it's the one in greenfield if you're it's looking the, for there's the, a couple others that the pop one up. in greenfield and the one in homestead mm -hmm. um uh let's see 100 acres manor haunted house it's an awesome haunted house you guys should check it out um scare house Although I don't think any of my work's still standing anymore, it's been a while since I did stuff with them. <laughs> what's what's last? What's the last new room that you worked on over there? The last room I worked on is was in the summoning, and I think they're gutting that. That's that's going down. Coming like down. as we're speaking, <laughs> they're ripping that out. Yeah, so, they, they had the last tour a couple of weeks ago, didn't they? Yeah, they're getting rid of all evidence <laughs> that I ever worked there. Oh, <laughs> we gotta get that parking stuff out of here. He's working for the competition now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but uh, no, no, that's great. It was, it, the summoning's one. Of my favorite ones over yeah the years. Like it was I, it was a fun one to work on it was very mm -hmm. different than most haunted houses because they were trying to go with something new like they wanted they wanted big rooms uh a lot of detail mm -hmm. um and it was it was an experiment uh um and we we learned a lot of really cool things out of it awesome and we can see your fat suit yeah, the at Tolan FX. No, 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 that's their fat suit. <laughs> I, I, hey, some I just, of those, I just sculpted the butt. <laughs> some of that, that you can see, you can see Aaron's butt. Yeah, over on TolanFX.com. T O L I N F X dot com. Uh, look up the full the fat suit for the full money at CMU, and uh, you know this this is the kind of world that he lives in here. That's awesome. Those are yeah, those guys are great over there. I mean, if you guys if you're looking to do any uh, independent stuff like as far as prosthetics, makeup um animatronics their animatronics are awesome so mm -hmm. you should definitely hit them up aaron parkas um, he's a designer for stage screen and this podcast studio uh so uh check him out and uh look, oh yeah i forgot to say that Facebook. you should check out the wrestling mayhem show if you want to see the pretty sweet wall <laughs> contributor to the wrestling mayhem show <laughs> as well you've been uh, pretty regular on there lately chatting with us and becoming part of the crew that's awesome to have you in here uh, uh part of that so uh check him out i guess friend him on facebook for now yeah uh, can, I, i'm sure we'll I, share his 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 company website once that gets going yeah <laughs> <laughs> so give, uh, give me a month or two there you go thank <laughs> you so much for joining us summer, so. <laughs> if you guys have anybody you think we should talk to let us know awesome cast on the twitter awesome cast at sorgatron media check out everything and subscribe at awesomecast.com thank you so much uh for joining us thank you to my awesome guest you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com